Honeybees are the most important pollinators of our fruit and vegetable crops and our seed crops. So when we grow seeds, when you purchase seeds to plant a vegetable garden or a flower garden, many of those seed crops are pollinated by bees. There's been a bee research program at the University of Minnesota since 1918. We have a very long history of doing very high quality bee research. Minnesota is one of the top honey producing states in the nation. We have a lot of beekeepers. Historically, it's been always been one of the top honey producing states. Collapse disorder, was that term was first coined in 2006 to describe rapid die-offs of honeybee colonies. Um, the symptoms that were described originally, this massive disappearance of bees from the colony, we don't see that so much. It happens, but we don't, that's not the major symptom of what's going on with honeybees right now. Instead, we see death by a thousand cuts, I would call it, death from many, many reasons. As we need many kinds of protein for our good nutrition, so do bees. So in our landscape, when we don't have very many blooming flowers, the bees don't, are, they're not very well nourished. And that really affects their health. My research tracks the health of honeybees. So as honeybees are declining and they have more problems with their health, our research direction moves to follow that and to try to help them out with that. When I first came here, uh, there was no parasitic mites on bees. Well, there was one, but the major one was just entering the state. It's called Varroa destructor. It has a great name. It's a parasitic mite only on honeybees. It sucks their blood. It transmits viruses. It, it's a horrible pest. And it moved into Minnesota and we started researching ways that bees could combat this parasite on their own so that we could avoid using chemical treatments inside the hive. And that's been a major focus of our research is how do bees keep themselves healthy. We have many different projects going on. I can't summarize all of them in one sentence. So we have work on propolis, the resins that bees collect and their, their benefits to bee health and bee immunity, their immune systems. I had a student who developed the very first honeybee cell line. Very, very important research. So a lot of human medicine, human research is done with human cells that are propagated in the lab in a cell line. And so there has never been a honeybee cell line. And one of my students working with Dr. Tim Curdy in entomology developed the very first honeybee cell line. And so with this, we can study the impact of diseases that are pathogens that only reside within the cell, like viruses and nosema, for example, and the effect of pesticides on bees without having to have it complicated by the whole colony. Our native bees are really unsung heroes. People are now aware of honeybees and their problems and they're just becoming aware of all of our native bees which are so critical to help in our helping with pollination and the, even of all of our flowers that we have. And they're very, very diverse. They don't live in colonies. Most of them are solitary, meaning they only live by themselves in a little hole in the ground or possibly in a stem. And there's many, many species. So if the more diverse species of bees we have is an indicator of a really, really healthy environment. So we're doing a lot of surveys and it shows in many locations the diversity compared to historical collections that we have in our insect museum is really low in some places. In other places, not so bad, but we really don't know. I won't be here forever, but I'm hoping to continue to find ways to keep bees healthy, healthy without having to use chemical treatments. That's really my main goal. 
And so if I have any impact on the industry, both commercial and hobby, that way, that would be good for me, a dream come true. Because it was, bees are so, such beautiful creatures and it's such a travesty if you have to put a chemical treatment in the bee colony. It just seems so odd and so foreign. And right now, in fact, they can't live without these treatments. And I'd really, really like to see bees how they used to be when I started to keep bees with very, very few problems and easy to maintain and healthy and vibrant. I think the future's really promising. We're building a new bee research lab. A bee and pollinator research lab will be breaking ground this fall and it will be built within a year. And so that means that bee research, both for honeybees and native bees, will continue long into the future at the university. It's really exciting. Three, two, one, two.